tonight report on the death of a Moses Lake man and how former Moses Lake Mola Hayats are representing WSU Athletics. What's happening in sports, Sean? Plenty of college football as local teams fared well in week three. Let's take a glance at our weather center forecast. Dry conditions and clear skies around our state. Mild and dry for the next few days, but when will that change? I'll have more details in just a bit. I'm Amber Jenks, and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. A Moses Lake man died Sunday night after falling from a pontoon boat into Moses Lake. John Walsh, a 55-year-old man, was on the lake with his wife in a 22-foot pontoon boat between Parker Horn and Lewis Horn. Walsh reportedly fell overboard while he was trying to move the deck lines to the other side of the boat, according to the Grant County Sheriff's Office on Monday. The victim's wife threw out a life preserver but lost sight of her husband when she went to turn off the boat's engine. She briefly searched the water and called 911. Walsh's body was recovered south of Go Island in about 12 feet of water. Paramedics attempted life-saving measures on shore where Walsh was pronounced dead. The Boys and Girls Clubs of the Columbia Basin recently held a grand opening for its new $3 million clubhouse in Moses Lake. Reporter Cameron Probert was there and has a story. After years of fundraising, the Boys and Girls Club opened their new clubhouse next to Park Orchard Elementary School Friday. The roughly 10,700 square foot facility features games, places for children to study, and room for other activities. The roughly $3 million project was paid for mostly by raising funds from the community. Executive Director Brant Mayo told the crowd gathered at the clubhouse it was a long and arduous road to raise the money to build the facility. As I stand here today and see everybody here and when we get the kids in here in a little while, um, I can honestly say it's been worth it all. I'm really excited. The new clubhouse is roughly twice the size of the facility on 3rd Avenue. Mayo said the new facility allows the club to recruit children and hold membership drives. Um, and we're really excited because we're anticipating we'll be well over 200, pushing 250 kids a day through this facility. So we're, we're so excited for that. For i Fiber one News, this is Cameron Probert reporting. A man allegedly fired a shotgun outside of a Moses Lake home after harassing his neighbors. A woman was outside her home on South Gumwood Street at about 9.30 p.m. on Sunday night when 36-year-old Michael Coat allegedly approached her and began threatening her. According to Moses Lake Police, the woman left for work and returned home about three hours later when Coat allegedly threatened her a second time. Coat was reportedly armed with a shotgun and fired a shot as the woman hid behind a vehicle. A witness came outside and told police a second shot was fired and Coat went inside. Moses Lake Police surrounded the home and Coat came back outside. Officers reportedly found a 22 gauge shotgun shell in the front yard and the shotgun and other shells under a bed in the home after getting a search warrant. Coat was reportedly intoxicated when he was arrested for felony harassment, reckless endangerment, and unlawful discharge of a firearm. Four people were injured in three separate collisions of eight vehicles on Interstate 90, about seven miles west of Moses Lake. Jacob Campbell, an 18-year-old Deer Park man, was driving a 1995 Chevrolet Geo West on I-90 on Friday night when he reportedly changed lanes and struck a 2008 Chevrolet Colorado. According to Washington State Patrol, the driver of the Colorado, 52-year-old Quincy resident James Stacy, reportedly lost control of the pickup and went off the road to the right. The truck rolled and came to rest on its top. Stacy was injured and the State Patrol issued Campbell a ticket for unsafe lane change. About 45 minutes later, three vehicles collided about one mile west of the collision. One of the drivers slowed down as they approached the collision and was rear-ended. About an hour after the second collision, three more vehicles collided where the traffic slowed. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. 
If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be back right after this. My name is Kat Sanderson, Managing Broker for Pillar Rock Realty Group. We love the Columbia Basin because it's our home and we want to give back to our community by kicking off our Pay It Forward campaign. If you buy or list with us, we will donate 1% of our total proceeds to a local charity of your choice and in your name. Call us today at 754-4444 or visit PillarRockRealty.com because we are your local real estate experts. Hi everyone, I'm Chastelyn Rodriguez bringing you your local weather. This weather segment is brought to you by Barry Motors. One great place to buy and service a car. Mild and dry temperatures around our area. Dry conditions will remain in control within the next few days. Chilly mornings around 40 degree marks. So if you're heading out for work or even bringing your children to school, make sure you wear a jacket. Now, there is a slight chance of showers by the end of the weekend as a low pressure system will approach the region, bringing that threat of unsettled weather. In the meantime, let's take a look at the Almanac within the past 24 hours. We started off the morning with temperatures slightly below the normal in the mid 40s, sun setting at 6.56 p.m. and maximum temperatures in the upper 70s. And for Moses Lake, we start off the morning in the lower 40, slightly below the normal, should be around 44 degrees is the average temperature for this time of year. Maximum temperature slightly above the normal in the upper 70s, but not as warm as that record high of 90 degrees, and that was in 1966. And right now, outside your door, clear skies, and those temperatures in the mid-70s with that dew point pretty low, and those winds pushing through from the south-southwest up to 7 miles Per hour. Dry and mild conditions remain in control within the next few days. Some disturbance, but it will remain towards northern parts of our state, towards Alaska and Canada. They're expecting that threat of showers and thunderstorms. And towards our area, dry conditions remain in control. Now, another system may approach our area by the end of the weekend, bringing that threat of unsettled weather. In the meantime, hope you all enjoy the remainder of the work week. Let's take a look at those temperatures towards the coastal area, ranging from the lower 60s to upper 60s and towards Seattle in the lower 70s with mostly cloudy skies, the Yakima Valley in the lower 80s. And towards the inland northwest, those temperatures in the lower 70s. Now taking a closer look at our Columbia Basin, those temperatures ranging from the mid 70s to lower 70s, Royal City 76 degrees with lots of sunshine and towards Ephrata in the mid 70s, Moses Lake as well, and Bridgeport maximum temperatures for Wednesday late afternoon in the upper 70s, 77 degrees, Quincy 75. Let's take a closer look at our extended forecast for the week. For the first day of fall, that's tomorrow, Wednesday, mostly sunny skies are expected with temperatures in the mid 70s and then an increase in temperatures remain above the normal for this time of year for Thursday in the lower 80s and more fall like temperatures by Friday into the weekend in the lower 70s with mostly sunny skies by Sunday and then into the beginning of the work week we're expecting temperatures to remain in the lower 70s. We'll be right back with sports. Paying your grant PUD bill with ePay is like getting free cuts in line. You pay when you want, how you want. Get free cuts in line with grant PUD ePay. Visit grantpud.org. Oh, dude, I'm just in the theater. It's totally cool. Ah. Seattle Sounders got a big win over the weekend. Seattle took three points from league-leading Vancouver Whitecaps on the road with a 3-0 victory. Austrian international Andreas Ivanschitz broke the scoreless tie in the 44th minute when he buried a ball into the back of the net. It was Andreas's first goal as a Sounder. Midfielder Michael Pineda doubled the lead in the 71st minute when he banged a shot off the post into the net, making the score 2-0. It was Pineda's first goal for the Sounders since August 10, 2014. Obafemi Martin sealed the victory for the Sounders in the 87th minute, striking his 13th goal of the season. 
It was Martin's fourth goal in as many matches. Stephen Fry finished with eight saves, recording his career-high 19th shutout of the season. The Sounders will look to keep momentum rolling when they play at Sporting KC this Saturday. The Washington Huskies impressed this weekend, knocking off Utah State 31-17. Freshman quarterback Jake Browning continues to get better as he threw for a Husky freshman record 368 yards and three touchdown passes. The Dogs will have their stiffer test this weekend when they host unbeaten Cal Berkeley. The Washington, Washington State Cougars notched their second win in a row, knocking off Wyoming 31-14. Dom Williams was the big receiving threat for the Cougars with 53 receiving yards and two touchdowns. The Cougs have a bye this week before opening Pac-12 play on the road at Cal. The Eastern Washington Eagles won a wild one at home versus Montana State. Eastern quarterback Jordan West threw for 410 yards and six touchdown passes as the Eagles knocked off the Bobcats 55 to 50. It was a big win for Eastern after falling to 0-2 on the young season. Eastern will look to make it two wins in a row when they play at Sacramento State this weekend. Before we move ahead to week three, let's take a look back at the tough loss Seattle suffered at Green Bay. Empty backfield five wide. And Rodgers is going to begin to take off and then fire, and it's caught. Touchdown, James Jones with a flag down, but it's going to be offside against Seattle. In the slot. Wilson looks that way, then the other way over the middle. Caught, touchdown, Fred Jackson. So Rawls in the backfield, Lynch still on the sideline. And Wilson throws, and that's caught. Touchdown, Doug Baldwin. Second and goal. This time a three-man rush. Rodgers fires, and it is caught for the touchdown. Richard Rodgers. Don't press the panic button yet, Hawk fans. Seattle should get their first one of the season when they host backup QB Jimmy Clausen and the Bears this weekend. I could easily see the Hawks winning their next two games and getting right back on track. We'll be right back after this. You don't have to drive to Seattle for exceptional cancer care. Confluence Health's cancer program delivers world-class care close to home. We have a highly experienced oncology team in a state-of-the-art facility, and we're a member of the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, which gives our patients access to world-renowned therapies developed at Fred Hutchinson, the University of Washington Medicine, and Seattle Children's. Together with the SCCA, we're delivering world-class cancer care close to home. Our spotlight story tonight is about four Moses Lake High School graduates who now cheer on the WSU Cougars on the university dance and cheer teams. Reporter Joe Utter has the story. Saturdays in Pullman means the return of Cougar football. This past Saturday, about 31,000 people donned their crimson and gray and watched the Cougs take care of Wyoming 31-14 for their second win in three games. While most Cougar fans will recognize names like Mike Leach, Luke Falk, and Dom Williams, people in Moses Lake might recognize some familiar faces on the sidelines. Four Moses Lake High School graduates and former members of the cheer team and the Mola Hyatts, now students at Washington State, are part of the WSU cheer squad, including junior McKenna, sophomores Kristen and Jalen, who are members of the Crimson Girls, and Nia, a member of the cheerleading squad. While the Mola Hyatts have been very successful in recent years, McKenna and Nia said there are differences cheering at the collegiate level. It's a big difference. A lot more work is put in throughout the week while balancing school, but it's totally worth it and it's really great to be on the team. Yeah, definitely it was um, a huge change and the crowd is insane. That's probably my favorite part. For the cheer squads, football game day begins about three hours before the match greeting fans outside Martin Stadium, performing cheer and dance routines, and welcoming the players for what's called the Cougar Prow. Game days can mean long hours for the girls, but it's no different during the week as they try to balance practice, games, and schoolwork. We dance about three days a week with workouts twice a week, so balancing it out, you just have to really plan out your week and know how to balance schoolwork with dancing and get ahead in your classes so you don't fall behind. 
It's a lot of time management. I have like a giant planner. It helps me out a lot. Besides cheering at Cougar games, the dance and cheer teams also compete in national competitions, participate in cheer clinics, volunteer their time in the Pullman community, and promote WSU athletics at various events. Many of the previous Crimson Girls have gone on to dance for professional teams, including the Seattle Seahawks, Portland Trailblazers, and the Dallas Cowboys. While the cheer team doesn't travel to WSU away games, they can be seen at football, men's and women's basketball, and volleyball games throughout the year. We love them all, yet we support every team equally and we just cheer on our coops. For more information on the Crimson Girls and the cheer squad, go to WSUCougars.com. This is Joe Utter for i Fiber one News. We'll be right back after this. Quincy Foods LLC, a subsidiary of Norpac Foods, is seeking motivated individuals to fill the positions of general laborer for their corn harvest season. They have full-time seasonal openings, must be 18 years old and older, willing to work swing shift, great people to work for in a challenging food processing environment. Apply at 222 Columbia Way in Quincy between 8 and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday or online through WorkSource. Quincy Foods is an equal opportunity employer. Welcome back. One person was injured in a collision on State Route 28, about two miles west of Quincy. Daniel Mahoney, a 54-year-old Dayton man, was driving a 1998 Ford Taurus east on SR 28 early Monday morning when he reportedly slammed on the brakes and was rear-ended by a 2005 Hyundai Santa Fe. According to Washington State Patrol, Mahoney was injured and taken to Quincy Valley Medical Center. The driver of the Hyundai, 34-year-old East Wenatchee resident Ethan Fox, was not hurt but was taken to Quincy Valley Medical Center as a precaution. The State Patrol issued Fox a ticket for following too close and Mahoney was cited for negligent driving and driving with his license suspended. An alleged drunk driver reportedly crashed with a 7-year-old girl in the car in Moses Lake. Lisa Ann Snell, a 30-year-old Moses Lake woman, was reportedly driving at a high rate of speed on West Market Street on Sunday night when she lost control of the 1995 Volkswagen Golf. She allegedly drove off the road, struck a tree, fences, and a parked pickup truck. Snell's car was reportedly found by police in a yard on Market Street. According to Moses Lake Police on Monday, Snell was arrested for DUI and driving with her license suspended. The seven-year-old girl in the car had minor injuries and was treated at Samaritan Hospital, then released. An alleged burglar was caught because he left a stolen chain on the center console of his vehicle. Prosecutors charged Miguel Urena, a 20-year-old Moses Lake resident in Grant County Superior Court, was residential burglary and theft in the third degree. The victim returned home to his Spruce Street residence in Moses Lake, and a man walked out of his front door. The suspect covered his face as he fled the residence. The victim told police a suspect was wearing a dark-colored hooded sweatshirt and brown shorts. Officers reportedly found Urena driving near the home. An officer allegedly noticed a golden chain on the vehicle's center console and asked if the victim was missing a chain. When the victim stated he was missing two chains, police went to Urena's residence. Urena allegedly admitted the theft and said he was looking for cash. In Northwest News, it's been nearly six years since Washington State Deputy Kent Mundell lost his life in the line of duty. Just this past weekend, his daughter got married. What happened at the wedding has now gone viral. Coma's Russ Bowen has a story. There's no argument about it. It is among the most important days of a woman's life and among the proudest any parent could wish for. We always said my dad was a bulldog and that was his favorite dog. So as Kirsten Mundell reminisces about her dad and the day six years ago his life was taken in the line of duty, she also talks about the difficulty of planning her wedding day. Any wedding is a big deal and not having my dad there was a lot harder for all of us. She knew she had to make it special, knew that he had to have a seat at the wedding right there in the front row. It meant a lot knowing that we were able to save a spot for him and knowing that I, I felt him there. I knew he was there. The back of her wedding dress was another tribute, the thin blue line that symbolizes so much in the law enforcement community. It was, however, what Kirsten did not plan that no one there will forget. The father-daughter dance. Don Jones, the family friend who walked her down the aisle, started it then. 
Well, just watch and listen. We're sitting there dancing and all of a sudden someone taps on the shoulder and says, can I cut in? And I was shocked. I didn't know how to react, how to respond. And he said something, he said, uh, there's a whole line of us. And right as he said that is when the next officer cut in. I just let, I just broke down. And who else wouldn't? I mean, there wasn't a dry, dry eye in the room. I mean, the photographer was crying. It was moving, not just because of this young woman and the support she was getting, but also the loss still cuts deep. Crushed everybody that knew Ken. I mean, not just his family, but everybody that, that he knew and, and, you know, people he probably only met once or twice. And the people who knew Kent Mundell for years leave the rest of us with a lesson. Life continues, but in some ways, it doesn't. People need to know that their families' lives go on, but they're still affected by it every day. I mean, I know they're always there for me, but if I need them, I never thought they would just show up. It was the best wedding surprise ever. That's going to do it for here for us for iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.